In this video, we're going to take a look at finding a specific coefficient or entire term in a binomial expansion. Let's start by reviewing the binomial theorem. The binomial theorem says if we have a binomial like this that we're taking to the nth power, we can expand it to be like this. Now it starts out with nc0, and then we have our a term and our b term. The a term is to the nth power and the b term is to the 0 power. Then it's basically the same except that this changes right here. That becomes 1. That goes up 1. This exponent changes. It goes down 1. And this exponent goes down 1. Also, these two exponents right here will always add up to that n. So because of that fact, if we look in general, each term in the binomial theorem looks kind of like this, where we have ncr, and we have our a and our b. The r is this piece right here. Notice that that 0, the 1, and so on, the n. And then this term is just finding out what that difference is so that these two add up to be the n. So we think we can use that to be able to come up with the coefficients or the entire term. So let's get that binomial theorem out of the way there. Oops. And then we will um, take a look at this first example. So for this first one, we want the coefficient of the x to the third in the expansion of this right here. So we can use this fact right here. And let's just fill in the stuff that we know right away. The n is this number right here, the 4. So it's going to be 4, C. And we don't know the R yet. We're going to hold on to that. But we do know the A and the B. The A is 2x. So let's write that. And then the B is 1. OK? And now we want this to be x cubed. So what do we need outside here in order to make that x cubed? Well, we need that exponent to be 3. Now things will fall into place. Because if we know this is 3 and these two exponents have to add up to be that 4, that means this one right here has to be 1. Well then, that means right here is that r. That means this one is 1 as well. And then all we have to do is calculate this, and we'll be able to pull out that coefficient. So 4c1 is just 4. So we have 4. And then times 2x to the third power. Remember, we have to apply that third power to each piece. So 2 to the third is 8. And then we've got x to the third, or just x to the third, like so. And then we've got 1 to the first, so times 1. Then we're just going to go ahead and multiply that stuff together, and we end up with 4 times 8 times 1 is 32x to the third. So if we're looking for the coefficient, the coefficient is just that piece right there, 32. All right, so let's see if we can't handle this second one here. So let's clear this out of there and take a look at the second one. So for this one, we have the coefficient of x to the 12th in the expansion of this binomial. Well, let's fill in what we know again. So we start with 5c. We don't know the r. That's what's going to come from the exponents there. But we do know the a and the b part. So we have 2x to the third. That's our a term our a piece and then here remember if we're expanding a binomial and it's subtracting we got to keep that negative with that and we could think of this as 2x to the third plus negative 2 so negative 2 right there then we want this piece right here how do we get the x to be to the 12th power well remember a power to a power we multiply those exponents so 3 times 4 gets us that exponent of 12. That would be x to the 12th. And then these two need to add up to our n, which in this case is 5. So to get 5, 4 plus 1. Then we put that right here and calculate we go. So here we go. We have 5c1. 
I know that that is 5 and then I'm gonna multiply uh, take this stuff so we have 2 to the fourth that would be 2 times 2 times 2 Did I say that four times I meant to if I didn't uh, that would be 16 and then we have x to the 12th which is what we were trying to get there so that's good then we have this negative 2 to the first power so we've got a negative 2 sitting there then we just go ahead and we multiply those things so we have uh, 5 times let's take 5 times negative 2 so that would be negative 10 and then negative 10 times 16 would be negative 160 x to the 12th so if we're just looking for the coefficient the coefficient for that one is negative 160 now sometimes you might ask be asked for a particular term and if we just uh, remember back to the um, binomial theorem and finding a particular term the second term is going to be the one remember it starts out as whatever the n is c0 and then the second term is whatever the n is c1 so we want this to be 1 in order to find the second term so in this case we will just go ahead and start out like we have been we have our n right there is 3 so it's going to be 3 c and because I know I want the second term, I know that this is going to be 1. And if you forget that, just flip back to the binomial theorem. It'll probably make a mess if I put it in here. Yeah. But notice that the second term right here has that 1 right there. So we'll get rid of that again. And then we have our a and b pieces. So we have a, which is 4x and then we have our b which in this case is negative 3 now we want the r right here so that's that one there's one and then these two exponents need to add up to be 3 so that makes this one 2 then we're asked to find the entire term so let's just go ahead and calculate it out so 3c1 is just 3 then we have 4x squared and that's going to be 4 squared is 16 and then we've got x squared and then negative 3 to the first is just times negative 3 then we'll work this stuff out here and we have uh, let's do 3 times negative 3 that would be negative 9 and then 16 times negative 9 gives us negative 144 and finally we've got our variable there x squared so finding a specific coefficient or term in a binomial expansion what we want to do is use the fact that all of the terms have a common layout and we can start by laying out the n right here n c whatever we don't know that to start with but then we look at our a and b and see what we have to do with one of those pieces in order to get that term that we're looking for then once we have that exponent we know that these two exponents need to add up to be that n so from there we can get those two and then we just calculate and we find our entire term or just the coefficient I hope this was helpful keep working hard on your math you can do it